Do girls actually like bad boys? I will be explaining the exact steps you need to follow in order to seduce a beautiful woman. And you'll also discover the best way to get her back. Your success with a woman is ultimately dependent on whether you can escalate your relationship. The way we judge whether or not you have great taste is by looking at your fashion. Hi, I'm Lucy. I'm a dating consultant at ProvenAttraction.com. In this video, not only will we find out whether girls actually do like bad boys, but you will also discover the exact qualities women find most attractive in men and what you should never do if you want to meet the girl of your dreams. From an evolutionary perspective, selecting a mate is one of the most important decisions a person can make. Sexual selection tells us that people prefer to partner with someone who will pass on great genes to their offspring and raise them to avoid wild mushrooms and hyenas. For the present day female of the species, it's about ensuring her mate will stick around through pregnancy and beyond to provide for her and the kids, help out with nappies and protect them from modern day problems like internet trolls, Facebook stalkers and PPI reclaimed telephone calls. However, anecdotal evidence shows that the good guy, Mr. Supportive, generous, faithful, nice eyes, great smile, doesn't always get the girl. Rather, it might be the drug addicted, sex addicted, unkempt guy that wins her over with his dubious charms. So, what makes the Russell Brands of the world irresistible to the ladies? How did Pete Doherty pull Kate Moss? I am going to share with you the pros and the cons of the four main guy types so you can see for yourself the qualities of guyness that most women will appreciate. First, we have the nice guy, also known as the keeper, the catch, or the take home to your mum guy. He's pleasant, respectful, and polite, likely to appear with flowers when meeting his girlfriend's family for the first time. In fact, he might appear with flowers when meeting anyone's family for the first time. You see, the nice guy appreciates the value of family and flowers. Importantly, girls can very easily imagine him proposing on one knee singing to the baby, faultlessly remembering every anniversary and hand feeding her soup when she's run out of teeth. What's not to love about the good guy? Well, he's nice, sure, but he's not exactly exciting. Yes, he brings flowers, but it's never really a surprise. Probably unused to being around beautiful women, he's blindly smitten with his new girlfriend, think Kermit the Frog, and so making himself constantly available to her, willing to tip X out any prior engagement Parker penned into his moleskin diary. He can come across as needy, which, simply is not attractive. Cue Russell Brand, Eminem, Justin Bieber during his recent graffiti phase, and this brings us to the bad guy. More spontaneous than Mr. Nice, women don't know what to expect from the bad guy. This can amount to an emotional roller coaster experience and certainly won't fulfill a woman's psychological needs. But once the fear of imminent death has passed, who doesn't like a second go on a roller coaster? Unlike his good guy cousin, the bad guy doesn't change his schedule to accommodate his missus which can give the impression of being a leader, and women like that. Even though, in reality, Mr. Bad might just be busy being bad on a Friday night. Bad guys are the guys that tend to cheat and to lie, and once these transgressions are uncovered, the relationship can never be the same. With Mr. Bad, there are at least 50 shades of guy, from a bit bad through to the downright thuggish. Some lie, others cheat, from the wandering eye guy to the can't help but lie guy to the full-on Walter White type. And although roller coasters can be appealing for a time, most women realise that they make you sick in the end. The good guy is your trusty border collie, whereas the bad guy is the cheater on the loose. As with most species of animal, it is grounded in women's biology to look for a guy who can, when the time comes, provide for the family. And the bad guy is simply too unpredictable for that. This is where our provider comes in. From an evolutionary point of view, he's the perfect match. That's why some women can't help but be attracted to the provider. A bit like the good guy, however, the provider can go too far. He showers gifts on the girl he met on Tuesday in Starbucks, paying for the skinny latte with hazelnut shots and pretty much every evening meal since. As with the good guy, the excitement can die out as the woman feels she's already won him over. Women like to see the relationship progress, but the provider can come on too strong, appearing false or even boring. Remember how the bad guy attracted women by appearing as though he had leadership qualities? Well, the genuine leader possesses two key characteristics that women find attractive, regardless of looks. Charisma and confidence. Think Simon Cowell, Gordon Ramsay, Napoleon. Sure of himself and what he wants in life, the leader is not easily influenced by others, which is an appealing trait of the alpha male. 
The risk with these alpha male leaders is their taking control can make women feel excluded from the decision making. On balance, leadership is a pretty good trait and when combined with the good guy sensitivity, the leader can be a pretty decent all-rounder. So, how do you become an attractive guy in her eyes? Simple. Incorporate all the four types of guy's good qualities. Be a nice guy without the neediness. Learn from the bad guy by surprising her from time to time, but in a nice way. Be a provider, but only to show her that you can protect her when necessary. And lastly, show her good leadership qualities. Thanks for watching. For more dating and relationship advice, go to provenattraction.com where you will learn how to crack the mystery of attraction.